Space Walking Around. What's going on, Years End Life? I'm here with my good friend Patrick Park. He is, um, well, he's one of my favorite artists, and I've listened to his music, and I still sing his songs often um, for years, for over a decade now. So I'm going to start with that. But the reason I bothered him to come and do this is we call it your Zen life and none of us are Zen practitioners. He may make a comment about that. But he is a Zen practitioner. And the other thing I wanted to talk to him about, time allowing, is he works at the Suicide Prevention Hotline. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Okay. And I wanted to talk about that because maybe you have lost friends to suicide. I know that I have. Um, it's terrible. It's a terrible loss, and I really honor the fact that you do that work. Um, but let's start with Zen. What the hell is Zen? <laughs> so before your mother was born, what was your original face? My original face? What was your original face before your mother was born? I mean, honestly, I think this... I mean, Already dead. <laughs> I, I, I had, the only time I've seen like past life stuff for me on the real real is I had a lucid dream once in my life. So this isn't that's not a past life kind of question, even though it sounds like one. Okay, go so on. So that's a way of. Um, so Zen, uh, the word Zen a lot of times it's thrown around and and it's like. You know, Zen massage, Zen. <laughs> Your Zen life. <laughs> well, you guys are doing like a, a pretty Zenny thing, but okay. Um, you know, a, a lot of times people equate it with peace or relaxation right. or whatever, and um, it's not really that. I mean, you can get peace and get relaxation, and that's mm -hmm. fine. Mm -hmm. um, but Zen really means returning to your true self, like your mind before thinking arises, before I appears, mm -hmm. before you appears, before this, that, self, other, before all of that, mm -hmm. um, which is a place that we all have, mm -hmm. but it's really, really obscured by all the like thinking, all the conceptual boxes we place on everything, we place on ourselves, mm -hmm. everybody else. Um, and this kind of like constant story that we keep going about ourselves, about our relationship, all that. So Zen means putting all that down and just coming back to your mind before thinking. So when someone says, what is Zen? You mm -hmm. know, like you did, and I say, well, what is your, what is your, your true face before your mother was born? Mm -hmm. So that, that's really kind of like a, a way of just... How can you answer that question, mm -hmm. all right? So it's it's that feeling of, it's that being like just 100% stuck. Like you can't answer that. It's just don't know. Don't, don't know. know. And it's not about answering correctly. It's just about experiencing that mind. So when you hear like the mm -hmm. those kind of like Zen sort of questions, like what they're called Kong mm -hmm. questions, um, you know, uh, like uh, a tree falls and there's no one to hear that sound does it make a sound or whatever mm -hmm. things like that you know those are designed to kind of cut off this thinking mind mm -hmm. so because they're questions for the most part that you can't really answer with that mind mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. um, so uh, Zen basically is just returning to that mind is it different? And keeping that mind moment to moment to moment for all beings. So like when we have all this thinking, we have all this these these ideas that we place on everything, our relationship becomes not very clear with those things, right? Because we're we're we have a relationship with our idea that that's not necessarily the reality. Mm -hmm. And you see that all the time and things get all fucked up, relationships get all fucked up, mm -hmm. the world gets all fucked up. It's all fucked up. It's all fucked up. <laughs> um, so returning to that place, you see everything clearly, and then you're not acting on your idea necessarily. You're not acting through uh, you know, your, this storyline. That's just, what is this moment? What is my relationship to this moment? 
how do I function clearly in this moment for all beings? So is that, I would refer to that, or I think of that in terms of like Buddha nature. Does, right. Does that resonate for you? Is that same, cool? same thing. Same. Okay. So there's a lot of different ways to like talk about this stuff, mm -hmm. Buddha nature. So your true, returning to your true self or this mind before thinking, well, that is your Buddha nature. Right. Same, same point. Beautiful. Um, so, you know, Zen um, has, has a kind of like different way. You know, it's said that like, you know, the Buddha first taught uh, kind of like the Theravada, mm -hmm. then Mahayana, mm -hmm. and then he taught Zen. Mm -hmm. Not that any of these things were better or different necessarily even than the others. They were just like suited toward particular kind of karma. Mm -hmm. Um, so Zen kind of, I feel like sometimes assumes some things from, uh, Mahayana mm -hmm. that are kind of already present in this, in a student mm -hmm. in some ways. So like there's, we talk about, um, it's called the four pillars. Mm -hmm. And so these, these four pillars are great doubt, mm -hmm. great faith, great question and great bodhisattva valve. Mm -hmm. So great doubt you can equate to like renunciation, mm -hmm. which is uh, really like the renunciation of samsara. So that means like, great doubt means like, you kind of have this recognition of, um, you know, I've, I've been going through life this way and I keep running into this thing where all these things that I think are gonna make me happy don't make me happy. They're different than I thought they were gonna be or whatever, you know, and it's this thing over and over and you kind of, kind of see this and you start to see that it's a little rigged, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. like that, that this way of living doesn't ever actually go anywhere new. Like all the sort of surface emotions and like, you know, things change, you know, it's like being in different rooms, mm -hmm. you know, but you always have this kind of like sense of like not enough, you know, mm -hmm. so this, exactly. Mm -hmm. So this is like, you know, in the Mahayana, what they talk about in terms of like renunciation same thing with Zen. Um, so you, you, uh, putting all that down, you know, and sort of like really wanting to like escape that kind of way of living, mm -hmm. you know, um, great faith means like you have just great faith in your own true nature, your mm -hmm. own Buddha nature. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, that can be hard actually for a lot of people, at the beginning because it's not based necessarily on experience in the beginning it's based on like teachings and like what other people say mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of times people don't know if they really believe that there is this kind of true nature yeah it's hard um and there absolutely is and if you practice you will experience it and then that faith will grow from experience mm -hmm. you know but in the beginning you know you can kind of look at like all the great masters of throughout history and look at like these people have dedicated their entire lives to just like practicing day in, day out, day in for the betterment of all beings. And you can look at that and you say, well, do you really think, do I really think that they've done that to trick me? <laughs> do you know, or do they really like right. think that they, is this really of some benefit? Mm -hmm. And you look at all of them, mm -hmm. you know, and like they just radiate joy mm -hmm. and happiness. You know, and that's a pretty, like, that's a pretty clear tell, mm -hmm. right? Like, you you can kind of tell the proof is in the pudding there, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so until, like, you have, like, some experience, you know, that's one way where you can kind of, like, reflect on that. Like, okay, and then it'll help you sort of give yourself over to that more. Mm -hmm. um, the next one is great question, which is really important. And that great question is, what am I? What, what is this? Yeah, what is this? So, you know, we all have this I, you know, mm -hmm. I am Patrick, I do this, I'm a musician, I'm a father, I'm a blah, 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 mm -hmm. right? But no one understands this I, you know? Um, where does this I come from? Where does it go? You know what I mean? Is it, is it, a, is it my body? Mm -hmm. Is it my job? Is it my... Uh, you know, what job is it? Like it, what is it? Mm -hmm. um, and the more and more you look at it and the more you keep this question, 
you know, the more that you kind of see that it, it like you can never, you never find it, mm -hmm. you know, like it keeps moving. Mm -hmm. And the more and more you look for it, you kind of realize like it's not there. Mm -hmm. And this eye is like, it's a thought. And it's in, in essence, it's a really like powerful, habitual thought. It's automatic that we relate to ourselves in this dualistic way. You know, I, my, me, you, they, them. Mm -hmm. um, but the more and more you look at it, it's really not there. Mm -hmm. And the, the keeping that great question, we say like to keep this question in the way that like a um, like a mother whose son has gone off to war or something. Mm -hmm. Like she keeps the question of like, when will my son come home? Or when will my daughter come home? Mm -hmm. You know, she goes through her day, she does her, she goes to work, you know, she pays the bills, she, you know, cleans the house, mm -hmm. tends to her duties, but always in the back of her mind is this question, like when is my child gonna come home? So you keep that question kind of in that same way. You know, you keep coming back to it throughout your day, you keep working on it. And, you know, like situations will come up, you know, where you feel like very like amped up, you'll feel very emotional, you'll feel very like triggered, you know. Mm -hmm. And those are powerful times to practice with this, mm -hmm. you know, to just, whoa, what, what is this? Mm -hmm. What am I right now? Lots of opportunity to practice that. Sure, there's so much opportunity <laughs> in daily life. Um, Right, and then the last one is Great Bodhisattva Vow, which is the beginning, middle, and end of all of this. You know, which is, how can I help you? You right. know, which moment to moment to moment. Mm -hmm. It's not just for me, it's not just for my family, it's for everybody. It's Everyone. for all beings. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a really powerful thing. It's a really powerful thing as you go through this life to kind of look at that and reflect on that. Because this life is extremely painful, and it's one of Grace life's great ironies that it is the most painful when we are trying to get out of pain, and when we don't want to be in pain, right? Mm -hmm. So, at that moment, you know, reflecting on the fact that uh, all beings, all human beings have this, this pain is not specific to me. My pain is not special, mm -hmm. you know, um, and that automatically kind of lessens your pain, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And it automatically connects you to everyone else and everything else, you know? So that's why I say it's the beginning, the middle, and the end. Um, so all of the, with these four great pillars, this is not, they're not like, these aren't the causes and conditions necessary for your true self mm -hmm. because your true self is without cause condition it's it is your, your the primary point mm -hmm. but these are like the causes and conditions sort of necessary for us to get out of our own way mm -hmm. you know what i mean they do so like we're kind of returning to these kind of things these sort of guideposts mm -hmm. it's like a way of like learning to really get out of our own way because that's what it's in essence all about it's always zen, zen buddhism just being a human being. But there's the uh, the image of you're not the clouds, you're the sun, and practice is really just peeling away the clouds. The sun is always there. Yes, it's like the yeah. Um. So, in the interest of helping other people get out of suffering, could you speak a little bit about the work that you do? Sure. Aside from writing bangers all the time. <laughs> 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 no one's ever referred to my music like that. Oh, heart bangers, dude. Heart bangers. Heart bangers. <laughs> um, yeah, so, um, you know, it's something that I've done uh, for a few years. And um, there's just, there's a lot of people suffering. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of a lot of pain out there and um, it started as a way for me to just kind of uh, I don't know, give back a little bit and to um, I don't know, kind of see if I could help mm -hmm. um, and it's become something that I really love doing mm -hmm. and suicide 
when it comes down to it, you know, oh, everyone has such, it's all so personal, you know, and, but I, f I feel like in large part, a lot of it comes back to a sense of loss mm -hmm. a lot of times that people have, and that is, you know, maybe a loss of security, a loss of sense of self, a loss of a loved one, a loss of like identity, a loss of hope, a loss of heart, you know what I mean? Um, and, you know, it can be really, really difficult to go through these moments in life. Um, and I, you know, I just try to hold space and let them kind of talk and I reflect back to them and um, just do the best that, uh, that I can to be there for them. Um, yeah. yeah, man. No, I get it. It's so interwoven, your path, all of your paths, your path as an artist, your path as a practitioner and teacher, and your, pra your, your path of offering service to people. It's incredibly interwoven, and I honor it completely. If you're in pain, please reach out for help. Um, we're, it's a shared journey. I think of it as a shared path, and we're all in this together, and the worst pain is feeling like that's not the case. Yeah. So. Well, there is a lot of that. There is a lot of, um, you know, the, the stigma around in, surrounding mental health and suicide, mm -hmm. I feel like, is getting better, but it's still there. And suicide in particular is something that a lot of people don't know how to talk to people about mm -hmm. because it's so scary. It's a great you shame. Know, it's, it's, scary for, it's scary for the people who are going through these things having these thoughts and it's scary for the people who love them mm -hmm. and a lot of times when people find when they reach out initially they'll get oh don't talk like that you don't you know you do you don't mean that mm -hmm. like you're just being stupid which shuts people down mm -hmm. really quickly but it's done from a place of love but you know it's hard it's hard to see that because it, it's kind of like yeah. closing the door on a conversation yeah um you know, but people respond like that, I think, because it is scary, it's scary to hear a loved one say that, and mm -hmm. you know, so that can be your automatic response. Um, but, you know, if someone reaches out to you and, and voices these kinds of things, see if you can address it head on, you know, and not beat around the bush. You mm -hmm. know? So if you're thinking of suicide, wow, you know, that's... It's really heavy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, do you have a plan on how you would do this? Yeah, you know, like, but it. let's let's talk about this mm -hmm. and see if you can talk about it with them. Because one of the hardest things about having these thoughts is the isolation that mm -hmm. you end up feeling, and the sense that uh, you are completely alone and that you can't talk to anybody about it. And then that starts to become, well, everyone is just maybe better off without me. Mm. And that's never the case. You know, suicide, like, you know, it's a, it's a hard truth that the, the pain doesn't necessarily really end. It kind of gets, like, sort of transferred, mm -hmm. you know. And, um, but, yeah, if you find someone that you know, uh, is having these thoughts, like urge them to reach out for help, see if you can talk to them about it directly. Um, and you can always, you can always call in uh, to the suicide hotline together and both talk mm -hmm. about it. You can learn how to talk to them about it. You can learn how to be a resource for them. Um, there's definitely help out there, you know, and um, yeah. Thanks, Patrick. Thank you. Um, so, thanks for being with us. I appreciate Patrick coming over and talking about Zen and the beautiful work that he does. Please reach out for help. We're in this together. We'll see you soon.